and welcome to Just One More Watch. Probably about a month ago, I reviewed Mr. X's Rolex Explorer 214270, a watch that was absolutely eye-wateringly stunning and absolutely eye-wateringly expensive, costing well over six and a half thousand US dollars for a three-hand stainless steel sports watch. <sighs> Not cheap, is it? But then again, that's the price you pay if you want to buy a Rolex in today's market. I got a number of comments on the video, hey Jody, how's about some Rolex Explorer affordable alternatives and homages? Now, apart from the usual cheapies, the Parnas and Alphas of this world, one for one facsimiles, there aren't an awful lot of Rolex Explorer homages. But guess what landed on my doorstep last week? The Borealis Adraga, a watch that I think will scratch that itch for many of you. Now, full disclosure, this watch is a prototype. By the time you watch this video, it'll be on the way back to Carlos in Portugal, but he has allowed me to pick one of the various different options for myself in a few months when these watches are ready. So there's a bit of fun in here for me today. I think there's probably a clue though, if you look at that thumbnail. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. So let's start with a quick look at the Borealis website. I've reviewed a number of their watches in the past. Indeed, they were another brand to make my top five micro brands of 2018. Consistently high quality. I would say homages with a twist. This Sea Storm, for example, I reviewed that about four or five months ago. Definitely 50 Fathoms inspired, but with enough dial variants and options to add a few little tweaks and quirks as necessary. Similarly, the Adraga that I'm going to show you today is without a doubt inspired by the Rolex Explorer, but again, a few different tweaks and quirks. They're all on Jubilees, for example. There's a blue dial, there's a white dial, there's a brown dial, there's a kind of vintage old radium style one. There's date, there's no date, and there's a couple of different hands. If you don't like Mercedes, there's what they call commando hands. Now, Borealis do their own pre-ordering system. You pay 50% now, and then 50% on delivery of the watch. This one is $215 now, $215 later, so $430 altogether. This is going to be my choice. I think this old radium style vintage one with the Mercedes hands looks fantastic. But regardless of which one you go for, they all come in these little travel pouches. I much prefer these to boxes. They take up far less space and you might actually use them again if you do go traveling with your watch. And there is the Adraga. I got the Mercedes hands blue dialed version, but as you saw, there are a bunch available. I think about half of them still available to buy at this stage. Also plenty of spare links. I reckon maybe eight and a quarter, eight and a half inch wrist should be no problem on the stock bracelet with this one. So uh, yes, like I said, no denying where the Borealis gets its inspiration from, shall we say. Clearly it is designed to look quite an awful lot like the Rolex Explorer, the current 39 mil, but with enough variations that you don't feel you're wearing a complete ripoff. And let's be honest, the Borealis at 430 US dollars is six and a half percent of the cost of the original. So it is just a smidge wider than the roller, 39 and a half millimeters diameter, just over 12 mil thick, 47 mil lug tip to lug tip drilled lugs, which is a welcome addition right at the edges there though. I will pop this on a NATO and a leather strap a bit later on and show you how it wears. 20 millimeter lug width, tapering down to 18 on the bracelet, back up to 20 at the clasp. Sized up for me, I've got a seven inch wrist. I had to take out quite a few links as you saw. This one hits that stainless steel sports watch sweet spot, bang on at 145 grams. So 316L stainless steel case, a crown, smooth fixed bezel and all stainless bracelet. We've got solid end links, solid links with screw links and a proper mill clasp. I'll show you the bracelet in just a second or two. Now, I would say that's a, a box dome. They say it's a double dome. I would say it's a box dome sapphire crystal. Very nice, actually. I think they've done the sapphire very well indeed. The whole dial has that kind of lustrous sheen that you only get from a really nice bit of sapphire crystal with a decent amount of anti-reflective coating on the underside. Because they've gone for that box dome, you don't get a lot of distortion though. So it is nice and clean and legible even from the edges of the viewing angle. 
zoomed in on the dial and it's all classic Explorer stuff. You've got the signature Arabics at three, six, and nine, and you've got the triangle at 12 batons everywhere else. Now, unlike the Rolex, I don't think for a minute these ones are made of white gold. They're probably made of stainless steel instead. Now, there is a fairly pronounced sunburst effect on this blue dial here. You can just about see that if I move it around for you. Borealis logo printed underneath the 12 there, and just the Adraga and 30 atmospheres above the the six, nice and clean, classic Mercedes handset with a lollipop and I think a nice little twist again. They've put a red tip on the edge of the second hand there. Minute track all the way around the outside, nice clean dial, very much like the Rolex upon which it is based. Simple but nicely executed case. I've reviewed a whole bunch of Borealis now, and I always comment that the cases are very, very well machined. That is a lovely, lustrous polish to the side of the case and the bezel. Though, as always, a high polished bezel is the first thing that is going to chip and scratch if you're a little bit rough with your watches. Now, we've got a circular brush on the lug there. Doesn't quite match the brushing on the bracelet, but a nice smooth transition from high polish to brush and, as noted, drilled lugs for easy strap changes. Now, the crown is quite small. Again, in keeping with the original, you do have that Borealis B etched though, and it's fairly well grippy. No problem at all getting this one in and out. Now, I do like a nice Jubilee bracelet. I'm surprised that more manufacturers don't use these. They are super, super comfortable and a nice twist on the standard three-link oyster. Am I gonna get shut down for using the word Jubilee in relation to this bracelet? Well, if Borealis can get away with producing a watch like this, I think I'll be all right using the word Jubilee without encouraging a cease and desist order from the big R. So, satinized brushing on the outer links, high polish on the middle, links. As noted, get your one mil screwdriver out for those little screws there, and it's a decent clasp. All the usual good stuff, chamfered edges, a whole bunch of micro adjusts, space for your thumbnail, fold over clasp, security pushers, and it's a proper scissor clasp, which is always pleasing to see. Now, popping a link to show you the standard issue Borealis screw down case back with the mermaid there. Usual spec list, Borealis watch company, the Adraga. 300 meters water resistance and the automatic Miota 9015. Now, it should be noted that the date models feature the date at six o'clock and the 9015. These no date versions have actually been upgraded to the 90S5, which is the specific no date, so you don't get that ghost position on the crown. You don't see them very often, to be honest. It's like the Seiko NH38. They exist, but most companies go for the default one and give you that ghost date wheel. So it's nice that Borealis have gone to the trouble of specking the, the correct movement, if you will, for the no-date versions of this watch. So the Miyota 9000 series are Japanese high beat automatic. You can see 28,800 vibrations per hour, so you get that smooth sweep of the second hand. Stated tolerances are minus 10 to plus 30. However, as you can see here, plus four seconds a day, minimal beat error. This one running like a little rock. About 40 hour power reserve, they hack, they hand wind. However, they only wind in one direction. So there is a discernible rotor wobble. Uh, there's a distinct spinning noise you can hear and feel on the wrist if you're moving around with this one. Something to bear in mind with the Miyota 9015, but a good entry level Japanese high beat auto nonetheless. And I have noted in the past the quality of the application of BGW9 in these Borealis watches. I think the Sea Storm, the best BGW9 that I've looked at so far on the channel, it can be underwhelming if you don't pack the hands and indices with the stuff because it's that pale blue color. But Borealis clearly do, they use the top quality RC Tri-Tech Loom. Now, depending on which of the versions of this Adraga you go for, the Loom does vary. The one I fancy is the C3 Vintage Oridium style. If you want the, the Rolex look, then go for one of these ones, which has that ice blue BGW9 replicating the look you get from Rolex's own Chromalite. In fact, here is the Adraga head-to-head -head against the Rolex Explorer in its own mini episode of Loom Wars, but which is which. Now this is the full 20 minutes that my camera can record. I always say it's the equivalent of like five or six hours of the human eye. They say that chroma light lasts twice as long as BGW9. That's why Rolex switched a couple of years ago. But on the evidence of this, I'm not so sure really. What do you think? Who are you going to give it to? Left or right? 
the Borealis was on the right. And that's the watch sitting on top of my 7-inch wrist. I think it looks pretty sweet. As you see there, no distortion. Super, super legible. I think a quality piece of sapphire crystal can really make the difference in a watch. And I think that's exactly what has happened with this Adraga. They've used a nice bit of box dome sapphire. And it really sets the watch off a treat. As does that Jubilee bracelet. Nice to see those classic looks, the classic dial pattern on not the usual three-link oyster bracelet. Bracelet. And that's the full overhead shot. 39 mil, great size, great weight, carries its weight well. Seeing so, you know, a Jubilee with a watch that wasn't too heavy, I tend to wear it a little bit looser. I tend to wear it below the knuckle. I know, look at that. I normally show the watch way above the knuckle, but there, I think I wear this one below the wrist. I do tend to wear stainless steel watches on these jubilees a little bit lower a little bit looser very very comfortable these bracelets i wish more people would spec them to be honest and you can see what i mean about that quality piece of sapphire crystal when i get this one out into some natural light super super legible i mean that explorer style dial is all about the legibility it's a clean clean tool watch design and borealis haven't over cluttered it at all that glass really sets it off a treat. Nice and comfortable on the wrist. Oyster style case, I guess they've gone for something similar in this case. Sits very nicely on my seven inch wrist. That 39 and a half, slightly bigger than the Rolex, but still not too big, certainly not unbalanced at all. So what about a couple of different strap options then? That clean dial is gonna make this one a bit of a strap monster. Now, my fears and misgivings about the drilled lug hole placement were unfounded. It's just about spot on. This is it on my trusty Collareb Spoleto. I think the old radium toned one will look great on this when it arrives. Or what about a NATO strap? Because this one is only 12 mil thick, I think you can get away with NATO straps, no problem. I'm not a massive fan of NATOs myself, but I do occasionally rock one of these single pass ones by Spring Made. Only one pass obviously means that it sits nice and tight to the wrist as well. Looks pretty good on this though, I must say. So far, so good then. But what are my moans and niggles today? What am I going to complain about this Borealis Adraga? Well, uh, no points for originality. Jubilee bracelet aside, that's not the issue today though. The, the point is to look as much like the Rolex Explorer as is possible. Returning to the website of the versions that have sold out so far, I'm a bit surprised that the date ones have gone so well. I think punching a date frame on the six o'clock where that classic Arabic should be rather ruins the original design. It ruins the symmetry, the grace, the balance of the Rolex Explorer. So I guess that's a positive in some respects. You can still pick up one of the no date variants, which would be my choice in the first place. And then there's the price. $430 for an homage featuring a Miota 9000 is not cheap. Uh, it still gets a thumbs up from me today, but I would obviously be happier recommending this one to you if it was 399 or perhaps 375. But if you look at the Sea Storm, if you look at every other one of Borealis's models, they sell out. So they will not have a problem shifting all of those units, I suspect, at $430. And unlike a lot of micro brands where you buy them, you basically set fire to a large portion of your cash, uh, these ones hold their value very well well indeed the used market for borealis is strong so then at six and a half percent seven percent of the cost of the original rolex explorer i think this one is clean handsome legible great piece of sapphire really sets it off and enough choices with those commando hands the jubilee various different dial patterns that you don't feel you're buying a one-for-one -one homage if that's not your particular cup of tea so there you have it, the Rolex Explorer look for about 7% of the price. I do like this one, Borealis do a consistently high quality product. Kind of homages with a twist, they always add a little bit of their own flavour, a little bit of their own character, their own design quirks to somebody else's design to be honest and I think they've done a good job with the Explorer. I do like the addition of that Jubilee bracelet. Day option, not for me. I'd be sticking with the no day. And to be honest, I would be sticking with the Explorer style Mercedes hands rather than going for those commando hands. Hence why the, the gilt vintage style old radium one will be my choice when the production models are ready in a few months time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.